Uh, I'm going to have a quick review on what we've talked about last time. And then after that, we are going to, um, wow, your notes are not submitted. Apparently, I'll do it. Don't worry. So, um, yeah. So as I was saying, uh, I'm going to go through, through a quick review on what we've done last time. And then after that, um, I'm not going to go with the container anymore. So I'm going to actually use a new example to go through the things. I'm going to explain the container. I'm going to bring it over here, explain exactly what we have done. And then I'll uh, um, actually give you an example that uh, is a useful example that, first of all, you can add uh, to its features. And secondly, it's uh, useful for things for you, thing for, for you to, to use throughout the semester. Um, so uh, let's add existing items. And I'm going to bring the stuff we've talked about last time. So I'm going to go to NAA. And that's that. Copy. So we, oh. Yours were, was, was cup, wasn't a container. It was the other class that was container. So yours is a cup, <laughs> the, the example that we had. So to show you how we can do operator overloading, I gave you an example, create the class called cup, and have a capacity and volume. So we can actually uh, demonstrate how operator overloading works on a, on a class. Uh, we create a constructor for it, uh, setting the, the volume of the cup and capacity to certain value. And uh, uh, we had um, uh, constructors to set the capacity uh, and uh, the volume set to zero. And then uh, we created a function to add to the volume of the cup. And then we mentioned we can actually do the exact same thing that we have done with the function, but give it an operator name. And we explained that when you give an operator name to, uh, to a function, that function can literally be used as uh, an operator. So when you give a function an operator name, that function can be called in two different ways. That method can be called in two different ways, either using the function name that it has that is operator plus equal. As you do add, you can call that one, or actually use the operator equal uh, operator. We said every single operator that we have can be overloaded with few exceptions that it's your responsibility to go find out which one they are. They are in the notes. Find out which ones cannot be overloaded. And then uh, uh, the only difference between overloading an operator and a function is that to overload a function, you can simply change the number of its arguments based on your need. And changing the number of arguments, you can even overload it, not only changing the types, but also changing the number of arguments. Like you have a print with one argument and a print with two arguments, that's an overload for print function. <coughs> with operators, that's not the case. <coughs> an operator, by definition, carries the number of arguments that it has. So if you have a binary operator, it has two arguments. You cannot have a bar binary operator with two up, three operands. It doesn't make sense. That's how the operators work. You have an operator in the middle and two operands at left and right. Therefore, an operator always has uh, two operands. So, and when you are making it a method, the uh, operator becomes the member of the left operand and receives the right operand as an argument, like plus equal that we see over here. So, writing that cup thingy that we have over here, this operator plus equal is essentially designed to have something like that, cup A, B, and let's say, and, and an integer A. So 
So this is designed to be a member of cup. receiving an integer at right, and the value that it returns, so, uh, sorry, this is, uh, it is, I'm writing that for no reason, let me just do it. So, this is essentially to do b plus equal a, and what it returns, what the outcome of the operator is, is a, <coughs> goes into a. The reason that I did not put an assignment over here and I use that weird thingy to show you that the outcome of the plus equal goes to a cup uh, was that if I put an assignment over here, then there is confusion of what is being overloaded. When I'm saying A is equal to B plus equal A, the plus equal is what is implemented over here, not the equal sign, not the assignment operator. That's why I'm doing it like this, okay? <clears throat> so we call this an operator with side effect, which means it actually changes the owner. It changes the owner receiving the content of the right side, whatever it is. So plus equal changes the owner that is the cup. In this case, it's going to be B. After it changes the owner receiving the argument at right side, it turns, returns the reference of the owner out, and therefore A can be assigned to it if needed. We said <clears throat> we have two. Two different types of arguments over here, not uh, two different types of uh, binary operators. One has side effect, as you saw, and the other one is the one that doesn't have a side effect. So if you have a cup <coughs> A and B and C, in this case, you're going to have B plus C, and the outcome of this operator will go into another cup. So the outcome of the operator plus is the sum of the volume of B of C. And how we are going to define it, we don't care at the moment. Just the signature is important to tell us that this plus sign doesn't have any side effect. It doesn't change the left or the right operand. And the outcome of this is a cup that can be taken and put into another cup. So that's that. <clears throat> how went, we went through specifying what the plus does went through the business logic of two cups being empty to another cup and what's going to happen and how we're going to deal with it. <clears throat> so as you see, the, these all have the exact same number of arguments. You can never have a binary member operator receiving two arguments. It just doesn't make sense. Because the owner is the left argument, the left operand, the right operand is the argument, and that's it. So in this case, what we had was the same thing actually as uh, the top one. So it's identical to this one. The only difference is that this one does not have a side effect, <clears throat> which means it's going to have the content of uh, the, 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 vo the, the volume of B being added by the amount of A, and it's not going to change anything in B. It's going to create a new container and return it out. And because it doesn't have side effect, we actually have to create a temporary object in these operators, build that one, and return that one out. These type of things, however, we'll find out that is extremely expensive. These things, returning anything by value, in C++ is an extremely expensive thing to do. When I say expensive, what does it mean? And time. So these are the two things, memory and time. These are, ex these are money, moolah, in computer science. So if you do something like this, uh, when you are actually saying cup uh, reference and returning this, it's as if this is so this suitcase, let's say instead of a cup, I created a suitcase, OK? So when I, when I put the suitcase over here, when I say return this, it's as if I'm saying the suitcase on a Xerox machine. That's not very expensive. I'm just showing it to you, correct? But if I actually return, create one and return by value, it's as if I am building a new suitcase, an exact copy of this, and I am delivering it by hand to you. 
That's lots of work. And that's really what happens. Not only that, just think about it. Where is the res in line 36 created? In the scope of operator plus function, correct? So this res is a local variable. How can it be returned and still exist? Think about it. It can't. So not only you built a new one, compiler has to come up with some kind of a ridiculous thing that we're going to learn later on when we learn about copy constructors and stuff. And it's going to create a temporary nameless cop out of that, kill this one, and return the copy out. It's nuts. So it is extremely difficult to return something by value. Compiler has to jump through hoops. System has to do lots of work to return one single thing by value. Try not to, unless you have to. We'll learn later on why, but remember, returning stuff by value is exactly like receiving stuff by value. Why we never want to pass a, a structure by value, we always said in C, pass it with an address. Because when you pass it by value, it has to get copied. Lots of information has to get copied. When you're just passing the address, you're just pointing. That structure is the one I'm talking about. If you don't want it to change, that's that the structure, but don't change it. You put a const in front of it. Okay? Remember that. Assignment operator is a very, very, very special type of thing. So in here, I have <coughs> cop a, I'm going to say a result, B, and A. And now in here, I'm going to say I have the result. So that works exactly like the other one. So I'm overloading the assignment operator. Assignment operator obviously has side effect. Otherwise, what the heck I'm doing? Uh, it has side effect. It changes the value of B, setting it to whatever we have in A, and then returns the result. OK? And you can grab that result in, in some other thing. Now, the thing about assignment operator is that we learned that every single member uh, operator overload that I do, I can actually do it with a regular operator, the one that is not a member, a non-member helper operator. We learned that we can do that. So the signature of, for example, operator plus that is in here, as a member operator could be implemented as a non-member operator helper function out there, which is a very bad thing to do. It's not object-oriented. You're not supposed to do it. You could, though. So if you do it like that, if I create another operator plus as a non-member outside of the class, the compiler is going to simply tell me, hey, this thing is already implemented. What are you doing? OK? For assignment, it is impossible. Assignment operator is the only operator that you have to always implement it as a member operator. You cannot have a standalone assignment operator. It is not allowed. OK? Remember that. We talked about unary operators, and we said unary operators uh, usually don't have uh, side effect uh, by default. The only two. The only two operators that are weird, unary operators, they belong to C++. That is plus plus and minus minus. Only these two operators are weird unary operators. Why? Because first of all, they have side effect. Number two, they could be postfix. So that's why the signature of these are a little crazy. So for regular stuff that we have, you have a, a cup, A, and you have a Boolean result over here. And, and then you can actually say over here, uh, res, and you get the, uh, you actually apply the Boolean operator to the cup. So you have uh, not A, and you return a result out of it, which is very fine. And it's the exact same thing with plus plus. The difference is that this one is a constant because None of the unary operators that you know of, they have side effect. You could have them have a side effect if your business logic demands, 
you can, you can you're overloading it. You can change it. But by default, they don't. The only ones that by default have uh, uh, side effect are plus plus and minus minus, which essentially you can have uh, uh, the result coming into uh, you can have so it essentially changes B for whatever meaning the plus plus for a cup can have and then uh, returns the reference out. Okay? The weird thing about plus plus and minus minus is that it is the only operator, unilateral operator, that can be post fixed. And because of that fact, you have to uh, uh, come up with some kind of a syntax for a signature to differentiate between post fix and prefix. They had no solution for it, so they just put an, it stick an integer in there. And so, that integer is not an argument. It doesn't mean anything. It's only a flag. A unary operator cannot have uh, an argument. It's just stupid because it's unary. It's the owner, so it's only one. So this int doesn't mean anything. It's not an argument. It doesn't have a name. You just put an int over here as a flag that this thing is postfix, and it has nothing to do with the, uh, with, uh, the plus plus operator that we have in here. Yes. Oh, it's a, for star, this is target of this. It means the current object, right? So when you are doing plus plus, the thing is that we wanted to simulate what plus plus with integers do, which is essentially when you do i plus uh, plus, uh, and then you say a is equal to i plus plus, it means first assign a to the value of i and then add one to i. We wanted to simulate that, and because of that simulation, we need to keep the old value and return that one. Because of that, we made a copy. And you are saying, I do not understand what is the. Oh, no. Uh, line 58, first overloaded. Okay. Uh, in the notes, it says this keyword. That's the object. Yeah. Sorry, it's the reference. Well, first of all, you said start is, I'll, I'll be very sad. Target of. Target of? Target of this. Star is always referred to as target of. Ampersand is always referred to as, as address of. So, so target of this, what does it mean? It means the, this object. It means reference of this object. And obviously, I'm returning it. So the problem with 58 is, again, so, so when, when you put an ampersand after a type, together they mean reference. So I'm saying. Cup reference, which means I want the cup itself. I do not want its address. Whenever you put an ampersand, you're pu putting an emphasis that I want the cup itself. I do not want its address. Therefore, when you are returning, you have to say target of this, not just this, because this is an, this is an address. But target of this is the object itself. It is the reference. OK? So remember, that's actually a beautiful question. So the star pointer, star p that you remember, essentially in C++ means reference of what p is pointing to. That's why you have to always say target of p. So anything that you put a star behind it, it becomes the reference of that thing. p by itself is the pointer. You want to change it to a reference, you put a star behind it. Target of p is the reference of p. Okay, so another thing that you can translate as so target of P is IPC 144. That's how I teach pointers to IPC 144. Okay, but in C++, if you see a star behind the pointer, call it reference of this. That makes everything crystal clear. So if you see a pointer and I have P and you put an asterisk beside it, you say reference of P, which means I need to get the reference of the object that this thing is pointing to, not its address. Okay? P is the address. So uh, uh, essentially, to name these things, this is what I mean. If I say,
to read these lines, I'm saying integer a, integer pointer p, p is set to address of a, reference of p is 12, or target of p is 12. What is the reference of p? a. What is the target of p? a. Where p is pointing to? a. What is p? An integer pointer. What is a? An integer. Got it? Okay. Again, you, you say their name properly, you learn it. If you have meaningless stuff, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna stick, okay? So that's that. Yes? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if, so if I actually implemented, we actually tried it, I think, in our, in our examples. If you just copy this, the code, if you just copy the code of this one and paste it over here and return a reference, plus, plus, before and after, we work the exact same way. It's not... It, None of them is going to act it's different. It's, it's going to be identical. No, no, no. Plus equal one? Plus equal one is plus equal. So, so cup plus plus and cup plus equal one will act the same way. Yeah. This? Didn't they just say that is not a parameter? It's a flag. So this flag only tells you that this plus plus is not prefix. The signature is postfix. That's all. There is no parameter. You follow? OK. So this int only means postfix. It's not an argument. It's not a parameter. OK? You are not receiving anything by it. Not operator? The, yeah, it just doesn't change the, the state of the cup. It just tells you if the cup is empty or not. It's giving you, what, this, these are what we call queries. Queries are, queries are, by definition, yeah, exactly. It's like I'm saying, how are you? You're going to say, I'm fine. It doesn't change your mood. You just said that you're fine. Or you say, I'm sad. It doesn't change your mood. You are what you are. It's a query. As... Plus plus is a modifier. Okay. So that was the, the cup schmup thingy that we have done. So cup review, I'm going to call it. So operator review. So that's going to be a operator review. And now let's start what we want to start. So. We are sick and tired of dealing with uh, we are sick and tired of dealing with uh, C strings. C strings are a pain in the neck. You have to keep tr you have to uh, keep track of the null at the end. You don't know if they're if they're empty or not. You have to follow keep following certain rules. You cannot assign one to another. You have to call a function to, to copy a string to see if two strings are the same. You have to use string compare to see. Uh, and and it's, it's very weird. We want to have a variable for a string. So I could simply say string name is equal to far dot. Done. And I don't need to think of what is null terminated, what is not. So how do we do this? We create a class called string, and we do all the dirty work behind the, the scene inside our uh, strings engine. And the interface out there will be just uh, working like a primitive variable, which means what, what we're going to do, we're going to, for concatenation, we can do plus equal. If we want to have two strings side by side, we can put a plus in the middle. Things like that. So we make this string 
work exactly like uh, a variable. So string, I'm going to create a class for it. I'm going to create a class for a string and uh, Obviously, I'm going to have my usual stuff. If not defined, I'm in a string header file, right? Uh, so, SDDS string. So, and then I'm going to have a define thingy over here and using oh and using uh, a namespace std stds and bring the class string in and uh, I think my string.cpp only needs a namespace and that's it namespace SDDS, and I'm ready to code, okay? So now I'm going to actually do proper design so we can actually use this for whatever we are using. And I'm going to use my utils to do all the string header file stuff because I do not want to create, I do not want to add those, I do not want to include C string anymore. I want to do everything myself so everything's, uh, um, done without that uh, secure no warning stuff that we have, all right? So, let's start. Let me just bring it over here, give me a second. Just a second. Okay, so <clears throat> now I want you, I want you to uh, think about it. Yes. Am I recording? I think I am. Yes, I am. 28 minutes and going. All right, so I'll give you a minute to think, OK? What do we need a string to have? OK, what do we need a string to have to be able to simulate uh, C string. So I literally want to put C, a C string in the belly of the string and manage it in a way so the outsiders don't know there is a C string inside. What are the things I need my string to have that we don't have it in, uh, in a C string and what do we need to have to actually keep a C string in here? Think about it for a minute. Anybody have an idea now? Yeah, that's later. What, what I want to see, what do we need to have inside of it? That's operator overload. Those are actions. What it has, not. You are thinking implementation. See, that this is actually a nice thing that we are actually discussing. You are all thinking how? Size. See, that's one thing. I need to know what is. This, the thing that you always wonder about is what is the length of a string. Remember that? So that's one property that I need. So I am thinking properties, not actions. We're going to go to actions in a second. Okay, you wanted to say something. No, you wanted to say size. Oh, okay, size. Yeah, size. So, so, so that's what we're going to do. The first thing I'm going to write over here. Um, and by the way, there is uh, a new type in C++ that we need to learn. 
It's called size t. That is essentially an unsigned integer. Okay? So things that you want to measure their size with, and you know they're not going to go negative. Like, I want to know how many cartons of milk I have. That's size t. I want to know what is the age of a person. That's size t, because these are not getting negative. I want to know what is the volume of certain things. That's size t. Okay? Size t is to measure the size of stuff. So I'm going to call that one length. Okay? And now, uh, I think you mentioned the dynamic memory or whatever. We want it to adjust itself with the size. I do not want the, uh, the programmer to think of what is the length of something. I want them to freely get stuff and put it in here, strings in here, regardless of what the size is, to be completely transparent for them. Therefore, we need dynamic memory allocation. So to do have the dynamic memory allocation for a C string, what do I need? A pointer. What type of pointer? Character pointer. <laughs> People say stuff, I'm like, what? OK, so, <clears throat> so character pointer. And that's going to be that. <clears throat> we know that I can, now we know that I can do this <clears throat> to clear everything up. So any type of constructor I have, I'm going to have a clean thing to start working with. I don't need to think about uh, making them null or zero or stuff like that. That means length will be zero when, when the object is created, even before the constructor is coming into being. And that means uh, m data will be null, PTR, as you mentioned, before uh, the constructor is being actually called. So the very first thing I need to do, I need to be able, I want to be able to do this. So let me just get into this PRG thingy of mine. Oh, things are, um, yeah, so uh, I'm going to just come down straight. Delete everything. In here, I need to include, obviously, string.h. And using namespace sdds, I want to be able to do this. No array, nothing. I want to create a string like that. Assignment at the moment of creation is what type of constructor? Default. Yeah, how many parameters it, it receives? So one argument constructor. OK, be precise. I know you know the answer, but you need to learn to be precise. OK? So assignment at the moment of creation is a one argument constructor. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually create a one argument constructor. So I'm going to say uh, public, and I'm going to say string constant character pointer C string. So because uh, I'm receiving a C string, and I'm going to set the invalid empty state right away. I'm going to say if they don't mention what, it's going to be null pointer. Easy. OK, so that's my, my string. And let's actually create it. All right. So I'm creating the constructor. Now, to create the constructor, what do I need to, to, to do this? What do I need to do? Dynamic memory allocation right off the bat. We know that, right? So I'm getting that, and I'm going to say m data immediately. m data is set to new character. What do I put in here? What do I do? Plus what plus one? How do, what is m? m then is zero. SDR len. Thank you. I need to do SDR len. But I do not want to use the string length of, I do not want to use the string length of, uh, of uh, uh, what should we call it, the uh, 
the uh, um, uh, the, the string header file. So I'm going to go to my utils, and I'm going to and I, in my utils right up. Yeah, in my where is my utils? Utils, 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 utils. So I'm going to go to my utils, and right in here I'm going to say. Uh, what am I going to say? I'm going to say string, C string, C string functions, okay? And C string functions. And I'm going to add all my C string functions in here. So essentially, I'm going to say, so string length, what does it return? It returns size T. We know that now. Size T and is sdrlen, and it receives a constant character pointer c string, correct? And it tells me what the length is, right? That's what I have in c string. So I'm going to come to my utils, and through the magic of control V, I'm going to do this. <laughs> okay, so size t, I'm just going to change that to size t now. We know si what size t is, size t. And, oh, and by the way, I have to make it a const because it's not changing the utils. There we go. So that's my SDR length. And you know what it does. It's a for loop starts from zero, goes up to the null, and stops and returns it. So it's, that's essentially what uh, SDR length is, right? So now I can actually use the utils thingy. So I'm going to come in my uh, string.cpp, and in here I'm going to say, Include utils, and now I'm going to say u dot strlen of c string plus one. So I'm not including the c string anymore. Are we okay with this? It's the same thing as that thing, but go later on find out what the source code is for it and how does it work. Now the next thing you need to do is to be able to copy that in there, right? So to copy that, I need SDR copy. And I'm going to bring the SDR copy in here. So <clears throat> the SDR copy is this one. Again, size T. And <clears throat> all right, let's copy this and put it over there. Oh, this is a weird SDR copy. Let me bring a, actually, no, let's bring the weird one. It's good, actually. Let's bring the weird one. So the weird SDR copy of mine, unlike SDR copy, actually accepts a length. And it copies up to certain length and null terminates it. So I'm just going to bring that one. <clears throat> so that's my SDR len, uh, SDR copy. Um, let me bring SDR. You know what? I'm going to bring the normal one. I have this, like, just to show you the utils I have already created. You see all that string stuff? But I'm bringing it one by one. I don't want to get overwhelmed, so I'm just going to bring the functions one by one so you can go through it and find out how they work. So that's the, that's the string copy. I'm going to put it in utils.h. That's the string copy. And let me bring the proper string copy over there. not the one with length, because I've written different string copies to, to accommodate what we need to do, and that's not what we want now, so I'll put this one. So this string copy works exactly like regular string copy. It, it receives a source, copies it into destination, and returns that destination out if anybody needs, uh, needs it. And in here, again, I'm going to change it to size t. Okay, so that's that. Simple, straightforward. So I have SDR copy now, and that's, I think, um, most of the things I need. So now the second stage of copying over here is to do SDR uh, um, u.sdr copy into mdata the, the C string. So that's the dynamic thing that I've done. Now I need to update the length. So to update the length, I'm going to say m length is set to <clears throat> the length of the string, right? 
That's what it is. Then in here, I'm going to do the copying only if m length, uh, m length is not null and c string is not null. Actually, I'll, I need to bring it in. Mm, let me just bring it in. That's easy. So just to put it in safe state, I'm going to say if c string is not null, do this. IntelliSense. OK, so and in here, I do not want to call the function again. That's expensive. So I'm going to say m length. So that's what it is. I'm saying if what I'm receiving is not null, get the length, uh, allocate memory, copy it. So I have the string over there. So now. This will work. I can walk through it, but I don't want to. I want to first have something visible. So the next thing I need to do is to display the string, right? To display the string, to, to see what we have done, I know exactly what display is. As, as Fardad mentioned to us, uh, <clears throat> a string display always. First of all, we need to have include uh, IO stream. We always return the O stream reference in a display, and we receive an O stream reference, OSDR. We make it flow through it, and by default, we set it to C out. So if they don't mention it, it's going to be C out, and it's not going to change anything in my class. And that's my display. And to create it, again, it's O stream. Reference, string, display, O stream, reference, OSDR, and, and I'll display it. Obviously, I need to have the IO stream over here. And using namespace STD. To give some meaning to this, why this, this, oh, and this is supposed to be const, so I'll make it const. Okay, so now in this display of mine, all I need to do is to display the, the, the string. And I'm going to do the safe state thingy that we're going to change later on. I'm going to say if CSDR is actually not null, then go through, uh, oh, sorry, not CSDR, if, uh, what is it, uh, M data is not null, then I'm going to say OSDR M data, and at the end I'm going to return OSDR. So now if I actually display the name afterwards, if I say name dot display, hopefully the name is going to get printed. Can I test this program? Is it complete? Or I need something else before I test it? One more time. In in line thirteen? No, because you did it in the header file. The prototype takes the default argument, not the implementation. The prototype gets the default argument, not the presentation, not the implementation. Okay. Got it? Okay, thanks for the question. Yes. Would this not cause a memory leak? It will cause a memory leak. Thank you. Therefore, we need to have the destructor before we test it. Immediately after constructor, actually, we should have done that. But because I was lazy and I was too excited, I didn't do it. So now in here, I'm going to get the destructor created to make sure I'm not going to have any memory leak. So uh, string, destructor string, and I'm going to delete M data. Do I need to check to see if it's null or not before deleting? No, because delete has it in its own logic. We don't need to do that. Now, if I run this program, you will see that it actually runs and actually uh, displays far that. So what we have one, split, uh, uh, one step ahead and uh, towards the creation, something that looks like a primitive type. Um, and that's a good thing. Three years later, did it compile?
And we have our Fardat printed over here. Okay? Now, we learned that we can create operator overloads that are not members of a class. I want to be able to, instead of writing a display, I want to be able to do this. I do not like to do display. The very first thing that I want my name to do is to get printed normally like any other variable. So that's what I want. As you see, it's telling me the operator doesn't exist. So this is an operator, uh, insertion operator, that I want to overload. Because it's the, the left operand, the C out, the left operand will be the object O stream. Do I have access to the source code of O stream? No, I don't. Because I don't, I will actually uh, create a non-member one. Now is the time that I need a helper. So I'm going to come right down to the string.h, and I'm going to implement it right there. So I'm going to say um, uh, o stream operator, and this is standard. Eyes closed, you, should, you need to be able to do this. O stream reference OSTR, and at right side, you get a constant string reference that is right operand. So actually operand, and let's make this one left operand so we know OSDR left operand. Okay, and we have to make sure that all these things are STD because we are in a header file. STD, we are in a header file. So now this operator can be implemented. So I'll go to the, uh, to the source code over here, and I'm going to say O stream reference operator insertion. O stream reference OSDR, and uh, what do I do? Constant string reference S. And again, these are all standard. You need to do it with your eyes closed. Immediately, because we everything that is designed properly, all I need to, say, to do is to say return S dot display OSDR and done. So my overload calls a display function. And because I designed the display to have the OS stream go through it, everything's going to work smoothly even for future upgrades. All right? Now in here, I can actually print it like a normal thing. And when I run it, it goes like that. Oh. Gives me error. What are the errors? Holy uh, mother. You have some wrong things in the declaration. In the declaration of strong? It's very strong. Where? Uh, let me. Ah. Uh, it's not even strong. It is spelled strong, but <laughs> string. Okay, thank you. All right. Now, semicolon missing. Let's see where. I missed the semicolon too? Yes, I did. Hopefully, this time it's going to run. Holy mother, what happened? Did I? What's going on here? The semicolon and control of... Uh, Seriously, just for an overload to take that one? All right, good. So now it's working. Now, now that I've done this, what is the very first feature you want the string to have? Very first feature. Let me actually add my feature first to teach you something new too, OK? Let's say if I want to see if the string is empty or not. I'm going to add this feature, teach, teaching something new. So I'm going to come over here. I want, I want to, let's say in here, I'm going to put empty. So we know that that's an empty string, right? I want to be able to do this. If empty, then I'm going to say C out empty. Else, in here, I'm going to say C out the string is empty.
I want <clears throat> my string when challenged as a Boolean value to return its state out. When I put empty inside an if, what does the compiler expect? Boolean type, right? A true or false, correct? But string is a string, so I need to define what the Boolean cast of a string might look like. That is actually an operator. The cast is an operator. It's called conversion operator. Okay? So let's convert it. How do I do that? To overload it is operator. So we know it's supposed to return a Boolean, right? Boolean, operator. What am I, what am I casting here? How do, you, how do you, if I wanted to manually cast it, how would I cast this thing? I would have said over here, bool empty, correct? To cast it to a Boolean, correct? Or if I wanted C syntax, something like this. Something like this, correct? So what I am overloading is the bool cast, B-O-O-L. So in here, I have to say bool operator bool and then const. But wait a minute. Don't you think that this bool is redundant? Because you are already saying what to do when Boolean is needed. Because of that fact, conversion op operator casts don't need a return statement. Because you are already saying what I want to happen if this object is casted to be a Boolean. So you are saying what the return value is in the definition of the overload. There is no need for that. So now in here, what do I need to do? I need to say in string.cpp, I need to say string operator bool const. And what do I return? What is the situation where this is in a good state and Boolean returns true when m data is not null, correct? So I'm going to say return m data. I can just do this, by the way. But just to make everybody happy, I'm going to say not equal null PTR. Because any value other than 0 is true, correct? So that would have been true, but just to make everybody happy, I'm doing that. All right? Doing so now. I, for all these things, I'm not going to say if CSDR. I'm going to say if this. In here, I'm not going to say, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. That is CSDR. In here, I'm going to say if this. Just to follow my own thing. So in here, say if I am valid, print me. And the same thing over here. Now, now that, now that I've done this, OK, now as you see, that actually makes sense now. I don't even need to actually name casting, because when I put it in place of a Boolean, C will try to cast it. And now if I actually run it, three years later, Four years later, five years later, OK, there you go. This, we know it works. We've done it already. It prints far that over there. We know that. But when it comes to empty, it wants to check to see what is the condition. It has to cast it to a Boolean. Therefore, the Boolean cast is invoked and data not equal to PTR, which is a false statement, will be returned. Therefore, it will be false, and therefore, it's going to say the string is empty. Yes? Which, uh, option? 
I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, uh, so when you overloaded insertion, for example, it was operator insertion, all one word? Or uh, the one that compiler doesn't get confused. Obviously, if, if, I, so if I did this over here, you would differentiate between the two because it's not an ASCII character. It's, it's not a, an alphabetic character anymore. But if I did it like this, then the compiler is going to get confused. It thinks it's one word. So use your make sense. So in here, it's a free, f you can do that too if you're happy, if, if, it, if that makes you happy. But it doesn't make any difference. All right. So that's, that's, that's type conversion, op type conversion uh, overload, if you ever need to do that. In the other class, I said, uh, what is a good thing if I cast a, a string to an integer? I was hoping that people say, if you cast a string to an integer, the length would be returned. But they said, no. If we have the string 1, 2, 3, it will actually, that was actually pretty cool. So we said, we're going to do that later. So you can actually convert strings to integers and integers to string if you want to. We, we're going to do that. So we're going to say a string equals to a, uh, uh, an integer value, and it converts it to a string and puts it in a string. We could do that. So that, those type conversions, we're going to do later. So because of that, because that, ta that type conversion is out of the picture, I'm just going to add uh, a query over here called length. And I'm going to say size t length. And this length of mine will return the length So that's interesting. Sometimes it shows it, sometimes it doesn't. There you go. So return, and in here I'm going to say m length. So to actually get what the length is, I can call the length method. So now I don't have any problem. Remember, you pass a, we said that you pass an array through argument list. You don't, have, you don't know what the length is anymore. Not the case for us. We pass a string, we know what is its length. We don't need to do any measurements. It, each string knows what is its own length. OK, so tell me, what is the next thing you want me to implement on this? Concatenation? Let's do concatenation. To do concatenation, the very first thing that we need to know is the engine for it behind the scene. So I'm going to bring that up not to, uh, not to pause halfway through. And you can use that as your break and go and come back. So I'm going to make it ready, and then we're going to do the implementation. So let me pause. We have five minutes break. To, concat to implement concatenation, OK, we can do two things. OK, we can create the function and plus equal operator. Usually, that's how it's supposed to be done. But uh, I'll do the plus equal, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So what I want to do is this. Uh, so in here, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to say, a dash uh, uh, type conversion and constructor. That's, That's for that test. I'm going to change it now. I don't want it to clutter because we already tested this. I don't want to retest that, so I'm going to remove that. So I'm going to call this Fred. So what am I concatenating to name? Another string or another C string? Another string. OK. So in here, I'm going to say a last name. And I'm going to say Soleil. And I want to be able to say name plus equal last name. Right? which means I'm adding the last name to the name. Then I'm going to say see out name. And don't forget, this string class that we are creating, <clears throat> you, are, you cannot still use it in any of your workshops until I tell you it's safe. This is not safe yet because we don't know about copy construction and copy assignment yet. When we teach that, then it becomes a safe object to be used. Okay, now it's going to crash like crazy if you do certain things with it. 
Okay? It's going forward, but as soon as it becomes operational, I'm going to say from now on, you can use. And by the way, you can contribute to it, as I mentioned before, if you add any features to it and send the feature to me, I'll add that feature to it, and I will put a comment, uh, this is what's contributed by this person. And you can, it's, your name is going to be in there. Okay? So be aware. You can do that. So let's do this. So when I have plus equal, at left side I have a string, at right side I have a string, and hopefully I want to return a string too. Okay? So let's do that. So in here I'm going to say, I'm going to come over here and say at left side is a string, so it's operator plus equal, definitely. Uh, left side is me, that's the string. At right side, I have a constant string reference uh, right operand. And I hopefully am returning a string reference, okay? So that's what I want to create. So let's do it. <clears throat> to, to actually do this, I have to know that currently my name is pointing to something, possibly. And I want to concatenate something to that, so I need to have a secondary thing that is bigger than that, and it's pointed by some temporary pointer, and everything's going to go in there, and then I have to bring everything from the other one into this one first, Okay? And then do the concatenation of the second object that is here. Whoa. That is my second string. And I have to copy everything from there into here. And the result will be the concatenation. So this is what I'm doing. <clears throat> the top one is the right operand. The middle one is the left operand. The bottom is hopefully left operand after I'm done. OK? So if I name these things properly, this is going to be the right operand's M data. This is going to be this M data, and this is going to be the temporary thing that I am creating to do my work. Are we okay with this? So let's do this. So first I need a temporary one. So I'm going to say temp uh, character pointer temp will be set to new character. And this one has to be the length of left one and right one together, correct? So I'm going to say my length, correct, plus length, plus the right string's length, correct? So right upper, um, right, uh, let me just fix that right upper and I'm just going to call it S. It is good enough to be in the, in the, prototype. We don't need it here. It's got to be S, or let's call it R for right operand. That's T, R. Okay. So R dot length. Okay. And uh, plus one for null termination. Okay. So now I have the green one created. Now I have to do the red copying, the middle copying. So I'm going to say uh, U dot SDR copy into the M data of my, oh, sorry, into the tab, my apologies, from M data, correct? I'm just going to write this M data to put an emphasis for it. There is no reason for it. 
to match what I have written over there. Mine. Now that it's done, I have to concatenate the second one at the back of this one, correct? So now I have to say u.sdrcat into temp the m data of the other one, so r.m data. Now that it's concatenated, life is beautiful, and I'm done, I'm going to say delete my data. I don't need it anymore. Again, I'm going to put this just to put emphasis for it. There is no reason for this. So delete this data and be done with it. Now that it's deleted, my data should point where temp is pointing. Return this. This is an unscrutinized logic of what I have written. I have to go through it and see if it's right or not. Okay? Check all the special cases and this being null, that being null. We add all those things. But for now, let's see in a utopian thing if everything's okay or not. So, <clears throat> and it's not actually. So in here I'm saying, get me, get me my length and the other length, get the amount of memory that I need. Copy the first part into temp. Concatenate the rest one after the, the one that I copied. Delete what I have and set it. First of all, didn't just length increased, so I didn't update that. I need to update it. I need to update the thing. There are two ways. Either do a loop, do a, str, a string length of temp and put it in length, but that's time consuming. Why call a function when I have the raw value? So in here, all I need to do right after doing this before, sorry, before deleting the data, what I can do is saying m length plus equal r dot length, right? Just add the length of the other one. That's what it is. So that fixed the problem. Now I can, now I, the deleting could be done before or after. It doesn't make any difference uh, because the value is stored. It doesn't do actually a, <laughs> a thing, but I, I'm just updating right after and deleting the data and everything. So down to this point, everything's good. Now, let's think. Uh, what if my object is, is empty? Nothing's in it. If that's the case, so I, I need to say if, if I am okay, if I have some data in me, do the copying, correct? Correct? If not, what should be in temp? If I don't have anything, temp should be what? No, no temp, t yeah, but because it's concatenation happening, but temp has garbage in it. How do I make the concatenation to become copying instead? It's easy. I, all I need to do is to make this an empty C string, correct? How do I do that? Temp zero being equal to zero. Done. So I'm saying, <clears throat> if I have something, copy it. If I don't, make the other one empty. Done. OK? Now I concatenate the second half into it. Right? So the other one's going to get concatenated, and life is beautiful. So everything's good. Now, what if right one is empty? If right one is empty, what do I need to do? Nothing because I have nothing to concatenate, correct? So all the things that I have written should only be if R is a valid thing. Nothing should happen other than returning this. So I'm saying, if I have anything, do the concatenation. If there is nothing, the object is as it was before. I don't need to do anything. If R has something, now concatenation is supposed to happen. Let's do the dynamic, dynamic whatever I'm supposed to do. And then go through. So I think this is now a foolproof one that actually works. Also, let's try it. We don't need this drawing thingy over here. I love this feature of this uh, recorder of mine. It's very helpful. <laughs> It makes it very um, 
descriptive, let's put it that way. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go right into walkthrough. We don't have too much time. 105, 110, we are supposed to. <coughs> we are still. Everybody turn on your computers now. Turn on. No, no, no. Don't, you don't need to shut down, but turn on the computers in front of you so you're ready to start the test in a moment's notice. Just turn them on. Computer. Oh. Lab computers. Turn on all the lab computers. Unless you're not my student. If you're not my student, then you don't need to do that. OK? <clears throat> Turn on all the computers. So when I'm done with this, then we'll do it. All right? So now I'm going to run it. I have a warning. Let me fix it. Where is that warning? Stop. I had a warning. I have to fix it. I don't like that warning. Four minutes till the beginning of the test. Make sure everything's good. Ah. Oh. All right, one more time. <clears throat> All right, now let's walk through it. So we started. We have the two we, we know. Now we'll go to plus equal. It comes to plus equal. It comes right down here. R is a valid thing. It has something in it. It comes inside. Temp becomes the length of both. It's allocated. If I have something, copy what I have that is Fred into temp, right? So it's going to actually copy it, and it's gone, right? Then it comes down over here, SDR cat to the temp, that is Fred, add the other one. So temp becomes Fred Soleil with no space. Now the length, that is 4, will become 9, because I added 5. Delete the current thing. Make the current object to point to temp. Get out and display the name, and we have Fred Soleil. OK? Now I'm going to write something over here and ask you as a challenge, why does this work? Three minutes, two minutes to start of the test. <clears throat> so this is my test one. Now I'm going to do this. Take a look. <clears throat> I'm going to run this. <clears throat> and the output is this. I did not overload. I did, this is not overloaded. <clears throat> How come it's working? Hmm? Everything? No. Who said cast? Because it's casting. 2%. Victor. OK? I just mentioned about the Boolean thing. When compiler can't compile, it checks to see if it can cast and says, can I make a string out of a constant character pointer, two ways. Can I cast it? It's a primitive value. It can't. Can I mix a string out of it? So it goes to a string, and it sees, oh, yeah, 
string is receiving a constant. So I can make a temporary string. And that string will get created. Some will happen. At line 13, it's going to die. So it gets created here, dies over here. Add messages to constructor and destructor. You will see that some crazy thing all of a sudden got created over here and died. OK? Not a good way. It's better to get actually overload, uh, uh, overloaded. Start <clears throat> the test. And I'm going to save these.